Hello everybody, my name is Andy, and today I'm going to be giving you all a small little tutorial and um, a tour of my setup that I have to scan slides and the process that I do to put them on my Flickr page as seen here. So first off, we're going to go through the tools that I use, we're going to go through the editing process. And then we're going to go through um, the sharing process. So the tools that I use are, for the, the main thing is I use is my scanner to scan the slides, of course. This is the Epson V600. Um, it has digital ice technology. Now, we will not be using the digital ice technology, though. Um, I'll explain that in the editing process. And again, yeah, the editing uh chapter i guess you could say um so this bad boy is able to do slides 35 millimeter slides it will come with trays like this that can come out and whatnot it can do uh color and black and white film and it can do photo and document scans as you probably have seen if you see my Flickr page i've posted um some small documents of like news articles or just big four by six or eight by 10 images and whatnot onto my Flickr. And this is how that I'm able to do so. Um, so I'll do a little tutorial here on how to use this quickly, a little brief one. So to do the scans, you need to have um, the frame flipped to like this as shown. And then when you're putting in your slides, this is the correct, well, when you're looking at the slide, this is the proportional way that you're going to be seeing the slide. The Conroe OCS. Um, so to get it scanned properly, you have to flip it over on its, just flip it right side, or flip it upside down. And then put it in the scanner. Um, there will be this item, let me get it here. This item here. Now what this does is it clips into here and this is for um scanning four by six images or any kind of documents um and whatnot i don't use that really much but reason why that needs to be on there is because this um lets it, the uh slides or the black and white film or color film reflect off and it, that's what gives it that scan the um the the item that is showed you you put that in there um, because 4 by 6 images and documents don't need reflected. They just need to be scanned on this actual scanner part down here. So that's why that's that comes with the scanner. Um, but yeah, it's a very great scanner. I've loved it. I've had it now for over a month. And for only I paid only $350 for it. It's been great. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I highly recommend it. Now... Um, let's get on to the slide storage. So slide storage, I was actually recently recommended these um, to store all of my slides because I have thousands of slides to share. These are cases, or they got little storage containers by Harbor Freight. Now these can come out and whatnot, or you can glue them in so they don't accidentally slide out and whatnot and your slides fall down. But as you can see, your slides fit in perfectly. And let me see if I have an example here. You can see in here, them all stored like so. I have uh, multiple of these because they were only $6. So I went ahead and got lots of them. Um, there's three of them over there. And then there's what? I got a total of six so far to store them um, by category, categorizing them. So this box was for the Corning Secondary. And I pretty much scanned most of my Corning Secondary stuff already. There's ones for the Conroe Buffalo line, NS Buffalo line, uh, the CP running from on the DNH to the NOLA and whatnot, and then North Shore, West Shore ones. You get the deal. Um, so that's how I store my slides. Very cheap and reasonable to use for slides for only six dollars. Or actually, I think it was only five, but with tax, it was like almost six. So very worth it though. I'll put a link down below in um, 
maybe not even down below i'm not sure where i'm going to post this yet exactly when i'm making this video but a, a link will be somewhere to buy these or you can just go to harbor freight itself and um you can look for these containers there um i'll put the link to the scanner on amazon um well the amazon link to the video just so you know where to go and so you look for the right scanner um i highly recommend getting if you don't have one already a pc now this it's a very expensive part of the setup um i was really fortunate enough to get one built by my one friend at work who builds pcs for a living for a very cheap price and because he had extra parts laying around and he made this for me for a christmas gift um so i did pay well i think it was four hundred dollars for the entire pc and everything what you see here is what i paid four hundred dollars very cheap for all the parts that are needed to freaking get the pc going but i was very thankful for that um another good uh a good tool, I guess you could say, that's related to the PC is a monitor. You want a good quality 4K monitor if you're going to have a PC. Now, you can do all the slide scanning on a laptop, no issue. I've done it in the past with my laptop. Well, I had a gaming laptop, um, and I've sold that now that since I have the PC. But the laptop did work and everything, but the PC is a lot better route to go because then you can get a 4k monitor i have a samsung 4k monitor i could put the link down for that as well if you're interested probably in that too um but the color color gradient is great the colors are pretty darn accurate for editing photos and whatnot so that's why i, I really recommend it um another thing i got was this mat <laughs> i guess we'll go we'll just Show off everything. Um, it's a Logitech big mouse pad. It's nice and soft on the top, so you're, when you put your slides down, if you do, you don't scratch them and whatnot, and they just sit there, and they're all good. Um, but it goes all the way up to here, so it's a really big mat. Um, wireless Logitech mouse. I got to get a Logitech keyboard yet that I've had in my Amazon car for so long, but it's really expensive. So this $10 keyboard works just as good, for now at least. Um... And then another big thing you need to get for doing slides, I wish I got it sooner when I was doing slides, is an air blower for, like, camera, like, a dust blower, I guess you could say. Um, this is by KNF Concept. Um, you can get the kit. I think it was only $10, $10 or $15, or maybe $20. I forget. The link will be as well in the description or where, where not. Um, this is also a brush, so when my process for cleaning the slides you get the slide you blow it off front and back a few times and then if um even if i don't really see much dust on there anyways i still go over it with the brush on both sides and then i blow it off again and then i throw it in the scanner um doing it that way really has helped with the amount of dust being on the slides when scanning so you don't have to edit them out on light adobe lightroom all the time so this was a very worthwhile investment and in everything. Um, so let's get to, say, I guess the desk light. So I know I like working in the dark. It's just more more comfy, more, uh, it's a mood, I guess you could say, that you're in. You'd rather not be working with bright lights around you, just when I'm working in a nice area. So this is a monitor light that attaches to the top of the monitor. It's very nice. You can change the color temperature. You can change the brightness. Um, there's also a light for the back as well if you wanted that to be lit up and whatnot. Um, while we're at it, here's the Conwell Historical Society calendar for February, even though it's March now. But that's one of the photos in my collection. I have two photos in that calendar. One of a, a DNH wreck cleanup in Herndon, and that one is on the X Redding in Schmokin. Oh my god. The X Redding in Lewisburg. It's a. Conrail snowplow job going on. Uh, let me get rid of this light now. But yeah, so that's pretty much the entire setup. I don't believe I'm forgetting anything here um, for tools. So let's get on to the editing process now. All right, so let's get into the editing process, shall we? So the first thing that we're going to do is when you get your Epson V600 um, the scanner, 
you have to download the software that is required. You have to go on Epson's website. Um, in the manual, it'll give you a link to go to to download the correct software that you need. Um, you download that, you install it, you're good to go. So when you open it, you're not going to see this. Let me get rid of this. So when you open it, you're going to see this. I believe so. This is what you're, well, you're, it's going to ask you what mode you want to be in. You're going to want to be in professional mode. So, and then the current setting, I don't really worry about this. Um, any, to mess with anything with this. So, to do 35 millimeter scans and black and white or colored image, or black and white film. I use 24 bit color and positive, okay, let's start off the top. I use positive film, positive film for black, uh, positive film for 35 millimeter color slides. Holy crap. Um, and then color negative film for, of course, color negative film, black, white, negative film. You get the, you get the point. Um, I use 24 bit color and then I use 6400 DPI. Now why I don't go any higher is because the image quality, honestly, it'll just get more grainy and fuzzy and it takes a lot longer time to scan if you go above 6400. 6400 you'll be waiting for about five or so minutes to do um, four scans of the slides so four slides in one go it'll take about five or so minutes if you're doing um, two two strips of film it might take about 10 minutes or so maybe a little more um, it depends on the settings you click down here that we'll be getting to in a second um, but for Slides, I do 6400 DPI, and that really uh, nails the freaking uh, resolution down pretty well. And sorry if I accidentally hit my microphone or talk a little too loud into the microphone. I'm going to be trying to adjust it here in my video editor, but please bear with me. Um, so, once you have your four slides in the scanner, and you have these settings to you ready... You don't have to worry about these. When you have these settings ready, hit preview. Um, you'll hear the scanner going off and whatnot, and it should take here about maybe 15 to 30 seconds for your preview to show up. Now your preview just shows you what the slides are, or what the scans are going to be looking like for the most part once you're done actually fully scanning them. So we'll get to it in a moment here. See, yeah, not that long, maybe about 30 seconds. Um, so right here, normally this usually pops up over here, but I just brought it over here for you. Um, what you're going to do, it only has one selected. You have to hit Control and then click all the other ones. Um, let me actually move this over here. Yeah, that's good. Um, so see how like this slide right here is a little purple? Well... Some of them are a little bit green, purple, blue. You get the point. So I don't mess with green reduction. I don't mess with that. The software with the V600 kind of screws up the slides. If you click this from my uh, from my gatherings, I guess you could say. Um, but this is always marked on sharp mask. It helps pretty well. Um, you don't have to worry about that. It's always going to be marked. Um, but you're going to be clicking color restoration now you'll see that some of the slot all of your slides you have selected change to color um, now say you don't want the OCS one to be color restored because it looks nice the way it is already you can have those three and then those three will be color restored um, or say this one doesn't look too bad without it so it's just those two this one number three and number one that I would say would need color restored um, backlighting correction is not really used often at much at all. But see, like right there, only number three could use the backlight correction, I would say. Now, you can probably do it, um, your editing and whatnot, with Lightroom. That's, if you're not using a photo editor to make any changes to your photos, then go ahead and if you see that slides or your film needs backlight correction 
you can just click that. But I usually don't do this unless the photo's really bad and it needs the backlighting correction badly on the scan rather than just in Lightroom. Then I click that. But no, I can edit that out and, and make it a lot better within uh, Adobe Lightroom. So, um, with that being said, these two needed the color restoration and these two did not. So, next thing we're going to get onto is dust removal and uh, digital ice technology. Digital ice technology does a hell of a lot better in the dust removal. However, the sad thing is that with doing the digital ice technology, if you're wanting to upload your images to Flickr or you're even wanting to edit them on Lightroom, it will not allow you. For whatever the reason it is, I have no idea. It just will not let you post it on Flickr or even edit it in Lightroom. However, if you click the dust removal, which does just about the same job, um, maybe a, a little less better, but it does the job pretty well, um, you click that. Now, I usually do that on all of my slides or film. It don't matter. So, boom. Now, only the images I selected, which were those two, are going to get color restored, and these two... Um, and, and those two as well will have dust removal added. So after that you would click scan and boom. It would take about five or so minutes for your slides to process through and then they'll be in your file section. Yes, I want to get rid of that because I already have those scanned. Um, we're just going to minimize that. So they'll get shot into here which is your photo section. Um, they'll just get plopped right in your pictures file and right here you'll be good. So then once you want to add them to your Adobe Lightroom, you can add them via there. Go all the way down to here. Boom, 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 boom. Review for import. And now you're in Adobe Lightroom. So at this point in, in the tutorial um, to editing, the editing process. If you do not have Adobe Lightroom, you can skip this and I will put a timestamp of um, when I will get to the sharing part of this whole tutorial. Um, but for now, this is the uh, Lightroom process that I do for my slides and we're gonna, it's not going to take too long here if you just want to watch it. So let's do the OCS shot on the Corning Secondary. Um, the main thing I usually always do is just hit auto, and it usually gives me a pretty good um, auto correction to the slide itself, as you can see. Um, and then usually what I like to do after that is, is uh, crop it, make it straight, and then after that I usually go ahead and adjust the color. So as you can see, the auto is all right it doesn't do a bad job sometimes with lightroom on some slides you'll probably see here in one of these slides that i'll edit here um the auto part in the color temperature range um will make it way out of proportion it'll make it like super yellow and whatnot so you just have to edit yourself to your liking um if i usually do auto and if it's like way off i can just tone it down myself but right here this ain't too bad um Personally, I like it, the little bit of blue to it, and not like all that yellow. So we'll just keep it at zero, zero. And the vibrance, we'll keep it at 19 now because of the fall colors. It, the vibrance is needed a little bit. Um, after that, we'll go down to clarity. I always do 10 for clarity. Sometimes I do dehaze, and sometimes I don't. Usually, if the image looks fine, I still do a 10 for dehaze, and it gets it down pretty well. Now an image like this, as you can see, the mountains and whatnot are a little hazy from the fog. You can reduce it down to what, whatever you like. Um, we're going to go down to about, I'll say, maybe 30, just so it's not too bad and not too heavy. See? There we go. Already looking better. Um, so now, if we want to maybe adjust the shadows a tiny bit, we can. Now, what I like to do is, if the shadows are all right everywhere else, but the locomotive or the rail cars or whatnot, the whole train itself, you want to shadow it up a little bit more. 
this is where um, we're going to get more in depth into the photo editing. So you're going to want to go into masking and then you can click either subject and it'll usually most of the time it'll click it'll highlight the subject which is the train and it'll do a pretty good job. Um, another good thing I like to do if it doesn't do that there's a new thing where you can click objects so you can uh, let's say let's select the railroad ties boom so now it like clicked a little bit of the ballast so you're gonna have to make your um, your circle a little bit smaller and you just use the mouse wheel for that and it makes it smaller or bigger and whatnot um, boom 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 see like that and you could change let's say the exposure and make it whatnot um, to your liking, or you can change the temperature, saturation, clarity, dehaze, all that happy stuff. Um, now to back, go back out of this because I don't want this. I just hit Control Z, and we're good. So now we just have our wait. Well, I mean, I think we got rid of our actual one mask. Oh nope, there we go. Um, so we wanted the shadows up a little bit. So right. Mm, I don't like that. Maybe 10. I would say 10. So if you want to get a look on how the difference was, you just hit control. So, okay. Let's go back. So we have our our new edit to the, the train. And you want to like, okay, well, what did it look like before I did the edit? That's what I like to do here and there. So you just hit control Z and it'll go back. Or you can hit Control Y, Control Z, Control Y, and you can see the difference of what the edit that you just did. So I like Control Y. I like the edit, so I'm going to keep it. Um, it looks pretty nice. The shadows are pretty well brightened up better on the train, but not on everywhere else. So that's good. So now let's focus on the sky, because the sky is a little bit yellow, and it just doesn't look right. So let's go to the mask, let's add another mask, and let's click sky. The sky um, selection, it usually selects it very well. Even if there's trees, code lines, buildings around it, around the sky in your photo, it usually selects it very well. So like that, you can just adjust the color temperature. Not too blue, but just, just enough. I usually do maybe around almost 30 or so, 30, 25, around there. Nothing super blue, because then it'll make, as you see here, the tree and whatnot too blue for my liking. So we're going to go with, I think we're going to go with 30. We're going to see how that looks, if I can get it up there. Wow, I actually did get it. Um, oh, okay, never mind. So let's just do that. So you can see how yellow it is, and now it's... A little bit better. It's blue. You can tell it's a sky and not the sun everywhere. Um, so that's good. I like that the way it is. You can try the dehazing part when you select the sky, but it'll, let me just show you what it does. Um, it like yeah. If there's any small small dust, it'll pop up a lot better, and that's not what we want. Even if you like yeah, we're only at what. 20 and a lot more dust has popped up. That's a no-no. We don't want that. Um, it'll be a lot harder to, to erase it. So we're at the point now where we're done pretty much editing it um, and that stuff other than getting rid of the dust. So what we do is we click the healing and we click the um, content aware removal tool. Um, and you can adjust the size and whatnot. You don't want to go too big. Like, you don't want to go big because then it'll just replace the dust that you got rid of with more, with like a little bit of dust. As you can see, like, look at that. So now there's a little bit here, a little bit there, and whatnot. So you can't go too big. You got to go maybe like about this size or less. And you can get rid of the small little dusts here and there. And you don't want to go like this because then it'll just replace it with more dust. And you can see where I uh, was trying to erase the dust. So now, you just gotta click, 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 
and eventually you'll get rid of all the dust. This this is why I was saying the tool, um, the the dust blower and whatnot, and the brush comes in really key play because I did not have those when starting off slide scanning, and it was a real pain in the rear end to get the dust off like this. It would take maybe like almost five to ten minutes or even more to get all the dust out of here. Um, sometimes you have better luck if you go bigger like this. It all depends. You just got to mess around with it um, and see how it works out for you. Um, see, look at this though. We're already doing pretty well. It ain't going too bad. You just got to erase the dust how you like it, essentially. <laughs> I did not think there was this much on the image. Holy crap. Um, once you're happy with it, um, you should be alright. It's not going to be perfect. It's always There's always going to be that one little bit of dust that's going to be there. Um, sometimes you can get away with doing that, like I just did. Sometimes you can't. Okay. That's good enough for me. There's going to be a little bit of dust everywhere. I got rid of most of it. That's better. <laughs> um, go back into the settings. Alright, so now we're ready to export the photo. So, what I do, instead of any of these, I go to custom settings. Now, because I like to have a copyright mark on my images on Flickr, because on Flickr, um, if you go to an image, you can download the image from Flickr. And I don't need any, not no offense to you guys or anybody out there, but I'd rather not my images be taken and copied, printed, sold elsewhere and whatnot and all that. If you ever want an image from me, you just message me and I only charge about $5 per um, print or whatnot or even I'll even send you... Um, an email of the uh, of the image and whatnot without the copyright mark on it. Um, I'm just pretty much pretty much putting my trust to you that you're not going to share that image with like thousands of people or sell it yourself and whatnot. But you're just buying a digital copy of it to print out yourself. Um, or I can print out the image for you and mail it to you, etc. Um, yeah, I've had instances in the past where I did not put the watermark on and my image was um, on websites and whatnot um, with no credit to me and anything. So, yeah, this is why I have the watermark. So, watermark settings. Um, dimensions, I do small and then quality 100%. It's a JPEG and then include watermark. I just click check mark so it's on every image when I do this way. So my, um, what is it, copyright mark is size 20, opacity 25, so you can still see the image pretty well, and but also barely see the copyright mark. So it's not fully hidden, but it's there. Um, and then anchors down to here, horizontals 12, vertical offset is 0, um, and the color is white. I use italic and Times New Roman, so yeah. Okay, there we go. So after that, you export the photo, and it'll export it into Lightroom Saved Photos, and after that, you're good to go. Um, I'm not going to show you guys these other three edits, because this took already 15 minutes, probably, of, d of showing you guys, and I pretty much went over all the settings that I used um, for most of my slides and whatnot. So we are going to go now to the sharing part. So I share my images on Flickr. Now yes you have to you don't have to pay any sort of subscription. However oh let me go back here. I didn't mean to do that. Um, you don't have to pay any sort of subscription until you have one thousand items. Um, I only have 284 on here, but I have thousands of slides, so I'm going to have to eventually get the pro version. It's only 75 a year, so it's not bad. You don't have to deal with the ads in at that point. Um, but for now, you still get to upload images at full quality um, and not 
shit quality if you were to just post it to Facebook. I, at one point, was just only posting to Facebook and not Flickr. Um, and Facebook would downsize the resolution and it would just make the photo look like shit. So Flickr was my way to go. And it's a lot easier to organize the photos because I have lots of albums on here um, for everybody to look at. Um, yeah, so this is the way I do it for the Buffalo Line related stuff. Uh, West Shore even got one for our documents. Um, with the newspaper article for the L&T branch, the last run. Oh, uh, let's say we got a timetable here of West Shore. We even got some documents here that I took with, um, I did not take these with my scanner. I took photos of these with my Nikon D3400 camera underneath some light, threw them in Lightroom, and called it a day. And so far, they've turned out pretty well on here. Um, you can, for the most part, on your phone, you can zoom in a lot better, but on the computer, you can't really zoom in too well. Um... But they're here and historically shown now. These are all block station sheets if anybody wants to know. Um, so let's go and show you how to upload them. So, go into here and we have the OCS shot. So the OCS shot, I forget. Let me look. Let me get out the slide here. Was it this one? Yes. Okay, so it is at Cedar Run, and this was Conrail, what is this, P, PSQZ, I think, I'm just going to say Conrail OCS, we're just going to go with that, Conrail OCS um, at Cedar Run PA, good enough for me? And this was shot by Don Gilson. This date is October 17th, 1993. Wait, 19, oh, Jesus. 1983, freaking the Corning Secondary was not around in 1993. <laughs> and then Andy Van for Collection. Third into the album that I have, Corning Secondary. And just like that, boom. I do not upload it to any groups at all. I just put in my album, um, and whatnot, and there you have it, Conrail OCS at Cedar Run, by Don Gilson, October 17th, 1983, Andy Mefford Collection, so that's it, um, yeah, so we went over the, the, uh, the tools to get started, and to scanning slides, we did the editing process, and now we have just finished the sharing process. Um, if anybody has any sort of questions, leave a comment down below, and I can surely answer it for you um, to, the, bleh, to the best of my ability. And um, thank you for watching. I hope this helps out a lot of people that are wanting to get into slides um, or just scanning in general, rare photography. Um, yes, thank you.